I think that everybody loves working with Paul because he really provides an environment in which science can thrive. Dr. Sorensen's a brilliant researcher. He's incredibly humble and, and, and modest about what he has done. He really is on the cutting edge of pediatric cancer research, and that really is now translated into all cancer research. Without his work, uh, this simply would not have been possible. Back when I was a junior pathologist, I became aware that there are two lesions that happen in very young kids, actually babies, that um, are really hard to tell apart. One of them is benign, it can be treated with surgery alone, and the other is a malignant tumor. So we decided to look into genetic changes that could help us differentiate between these two lesions. And in doing so, we discovered that one of them, the malignant version, actually had a chromosomal change, a genetic change that we could actually detect. So we went ahead and used molecular technology to figure out exactly what was going on. And that's actually how we discovered something called ETV6 and TRAC3. And at that time, uh, his lab discovered the fusion protein ETV6 and TRAC3 in solid tumors and that were found in children. And so the work that I did was really to take a look at that fusion protein and figure out how it was causing cancer and whether or not we could block that, the activity of the fusion protein itself to try and block the cancer from growing. So we made this initial discovery in these super rare tumors. And then we made what we think is, is a remarkable discovery. We found another tumor type, also rare, also in really young babies, of a different tumor that had the same genetic change. This is unusual because typically these types of lesions are only in one tumor type. And then other people also got wind of this and started to work on, in this field and discovered this, the same genetic change in leukemias, thyroid carcinomas and colorectal carcinomas. And it's now estimated that this type of genetic change in track fusion positive cancer, it's even a new term, is present in, in something like 1% of human tumors. When you lump those small percentages all together, it starts to add up to a lot of different people. So something start, that started in super rare pediatric cancers suddenly is relevant across a huge spectrum of different disease types. If there's an initial genetic lesion identified, it provides hope for, um, for the eventual development of a drug. And in this case, it took 20 years. At least it tells you one thing, and that is that it's okay to study rare diseases because you can still find things that are relevant across a much broader spectrum of, of patients. I think for those 10 years that we worked on ETV6 and TRAC3, a lot of people didn't see the relevance, how many people are going to actually benefit from this work. And uh, we thought it was important and we kept, you know, focusing on the project and trying to see it through. This kind of cross-disease uh, expression of a genetic change it hadn't been described before. You know, that's when drug companies got interested, when it, it was apparent that this was present across different tumor types. Eventually, a company called Loxo looked at this research and decided that they wanted to follow up on it to see if you could then block this, uh, the product of this mutation. And by doing so, actually treat these cancers. We knew that this was going to be groundbreaking and that was the reason why we licensed this product in from Loxo and are going to be helping them develop it further and to get the approval in Canada and market it. This drug is unique in the sense that it has been shown to already work against some 16 different types of cancers as long as they have this specific mutation. It's also unique that it's been developed to treat cancers in children and in adults at the same time. And it is now branded as Metracvi. That is what the name it will be marketed under. We expect approval in Canada imminently, which means actually by the time you're seeing this video, it will be available in Canada. It is the first in, and would be in Canada, the first tumor agnostic treatment approved. It's sort of satisfying to see that, it, that the drug is clinically important and it is very efficacious and people are benefiting from it. The medication is it's a simple medication you take orally. It, it has very few side effects. I think back to one of my early patients who actually had exactly this infantile fibrous sarcoma. And this is before the drug being there and she presented with metastatic disease. The, the discovery had just been made by Dr. Sorensen uh, a few years earlier, but unfortunately for her, she didn't have access to this medication. And so unfortunately, uh, she did succumb to her disease. But fast forward, you know, a decade uh, and 
the patients I'm seeing now with this disease, I now have a medication that I can use that is really changing the lives of these patients. My first patient we had on this really did extraordinarily well on it, was on the phase one study, had disease throughout his lungs and the disease just melted away. The first CT scan, it was just amazing to see, you know, just after, you know, a little over a month of treatment, we had a look and all these uh, lung lesions that were there um, completely disappeared. A cancer developing in a child is, is a tragedy. There's so much potential there that's lost, and there's relatively few treatment options for some of these uh, cancers, especially the sarcomas. So to have treatment available is, is tremendous. And you know, the end result is I see these kids coming through clinic uh, on the medication, who are doing well, who are thriving, uh, and who are leading normal lives. For me as an oncologist, there's nothing better than to see that. For Bayer, it is a, is a very big deal. I think we're proud that uh, we followed up on a discovery made by a Canadian researcher and have come out with a drug that is highly effective, that is safe, it's well tolerated. It's, it's going to be very rewarding to see Canadian patients benefit from this treatment. You know, everyone thinks that drug companies are, are only in it for the, for the money, but what I noticed from this whole process and, and speaking on behalf of Bayer, they're also in, into it for the patients. And so I've really learned that part of their motivation for this is also to bring a drug out for, uh, that, that fulfills a clinical need. And, and that's been really um, sort of fulfilling for me to be a part of that process. I think this, this finding really is groundbreaking. The fact that it, you know, this rare cancer has led to a medication that is changing the lives of so many different infants, children, and adults is amazing. A lot of times we spend long hours and, and we don't really know if it's gonna make a difference for patients, and that's really what this is all about. As scientists, we're interested in discovery, but as a physician, I'm also interested in improving the lives of patients. So, so all of that has been super fulfilling for us as a, as a, as a scientific team. The perseverance he's had in his career to push through all the hurdles, to make these groundbreaking uh, discoveries uh, and see them through uh, to the point that now there's a medication really uh, shows the determination he's had in his career. Uh, he is certainly someone I've looked up to during my training and now as, uh, now as an oncologist, I, I continuously admire the work he's doing. That, that's the message I always give to my students. Stick with it, show resolve, be patient, don't get frustrated because if you work super hard, there'll be something at the end of the road, a great discovery.